Welcome back to Fossil Ridge Games. Today's video is going to be Quicksilver, specifically a protection aspect deck for Marvel Champions Living Card Game. Here's the deck build. Take all of the Quicksilver hero cards. Next, your basic three resource cards, Energy, Genius, Strength. Um, for this deck, we're going to be fairly similar to the pre-made deck. We're going to have three copies of Adrenaline Rush and three copies of Civic Duty. Basic resources, uh, Avengers Mansion, Hell Carrier, Quinn Carrier, basic survivability stuff, downtime, and endurance. Next up, we're going to have one copy of Armored Vests. Um, I really had fun with this, this card, Multiple Man, so I put three of those into the deck, the full set. Next, we have three copies of Expert Defense. Next, three copies of Never Back Down. Three copies of Desperate Defense. And finally, three copies of Momentum Shift. Here's some of the basics that you need to understand for Quicksilver. First, he has the super speed skill. What this does, it allows you to ready Quicksilver once per phase. So there's two different phases in the turn. So I went ahead and put the reference cards out. First, you have the player phase. So think of it this way. You can do, let's say, a thwart sort of action. Uh, then you can ready Quicksilver again, then do an attack, or do an attack, then a thwart, or you could do two attacks, two thwarts, whatever that combo is. It allows you to ready him one additional time. Now, when you move into the villain phase, specifically when you're doing a defense action, and this is pretty cool, you can use and exhaust Quicksilver to defend, but his special ability allows him to ready once per phase. So you can actually do multiple defense actions with Quicksilver on the villain phase. So go ahead and remember that. And this is really why I picked protection for this deck. Um, oftentimes, I usually pick a different aspect than what the pre-made deck is, but I really kind of thought that this was fun. In addition to this, Quicksilver is very squishy with only nine hit points. He goes down pretty fast, so mixing him in with some defense buffs, I thought really improved his survivability. First step are two buffs that you should be looking for in your deck when you're playing Quicksilver. The first one is Accelerate Reflex. There's only one of these in the deck, and then secondarily, Armored Vest. These basically have the same identical thing. You're just going to add one defense to Quicksilver. He starts with really bad ability scores, but once you add these two buffs onto him, he has a three defense, and that's key because remember, he can potentially block multiple times. He can defend multiple times during the enemy's phase, so I'm going to kind of show you what that is going to look like to enhance your survivability and enhance the survivability of other players at the table as well. This deck is very easy to play. There's pretty much just one central theme on a lot of the cards, specifically the events, and it's going to be adding defense, either two to three points of defense while you're doing that defend action, and you're going to further enhance Quicksilver's defense value. So you can just soak up a ton of damage. And then in addition to that, you know, some of them will let you um, ready again. So potentially, especially with desperate defense in the middle, you could actually defend three different attacks on the same round. That's pretty crazy. That's kind of a cool special ability. That's why I specifically added Desperate Defense into this deck. This Never Back Down card is new. And what's really cool about this one is that if you do a, de a defense action and you get a plus two to defend while you're doing it, if you take no damage, you can stun the enemy. That's pretty cool, too. And then finally, this is kind of, you know, an old classic expert defense. You can use this card to just add plus three to defense. There's no cost to it, so it, it's super cool. So when you think about it, if you can defend two or possibly even three times during the enemy's phase, that's pretty cool. Whether you're playing solo or a multiplayer game, you can soak up a lot of damage with Quicksilver. Additional survival cards are as follows. The longer I play Marvel Champions, the more I want to stay in hero form. It just seems like you're a lot more effective. So as I move on and I start learning more and more about the game, I move and I gravitate toward cards that heal you. So we have three copies of Momentum Shift. Now remember, if Quicksilver has the ability to defend, you may as well defend every villain attack you can. There's really no downside to it, um, or at least readily apparent downside. So... What you're going to be doing is you're not going to be taking huge hits, but you're going to be taking, you know, one, two, three points of damage sometimes. So to supplement your hit point total, you can do one of two things. You can throw three copies of first aid in the deck, which is just a general sort of basic card. Um, I like momentum shift. It has the protection uh, aspect. So you can hit for two points of damage and heal for two points of damage. So you can chip away at the enemy and heal um, two points. Then, of course, one copy of downtime and endurance. 
those are always key in most of the decks that I build just to simply keep you up. And if you do have to recover, this makes you recover faster with downtime. Now we're going to talk multipliers real quick. I don't want to get too esoteric on math, but this is pretty cool. So kind of flanking the screens right here, these are two um, upgrades that Quicksilver has. And one of them does plus one thwart, the other one does plus one attack. But in the middle of the screen, there are a set of six upgrades that you can use. That Once you put it on the table, you can discard it to give Quicksilver either plus one thwart until the end of the phase or plus one attack. Now remember too, you can discard multiples of these in conjunction with the permanent upgrades to add some really crazy stuff. So think of it this way. Let's say I have um, this hyper perception out, which is plus one thwart in conjunction with one of these civic duties. I discard the civic duty. Now I'm giving Quicksilver a plus two to thwart. So now Quicksilver is at a three. And you can do some pretty crazy stuff with uh, multiplication. Yeah. And I'm gonna show you that real quick. In this example, Quicksilver now has a three thwart. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna go ahead and use that as an action. You're going to exhaust him. And then his special ability allows him to ready one additional time. Then I'm gonna do it again. So by having just this plus three, you can remove six threats total, which is pretty crazy. So something else that you're gonna be on the lookout for are ways to make that even better or ways to ready him again. So in this deck, there are four copies of Always Be Running. This card allows Quicksilver to ready an additional time. So he can already ready once per the phase. So you can do two different actions. Now this allows him to do a third action. Now if you have multiple copies of this, it gets really crazy really fast. So a plus three um, with Always Be Running now gives you essentially a three times multiplier for thwart. So you're going to be removing nine threats total, which is pretty cool. Now remember too, that if you use this with the sort of like attack abilities, you can do the same thing as well. So maybe you want to buff his attack to a plus three, and then you can punch something three times for nine points of damage. That's pretty cool. Um, but you can even make these even more insane, and I'll show you how. So now that you understand the basics of sort of this multiplication and this readying sort of thing with Quicksilver, things are really going to get out of control. There's two copies of Maximum Velocity in the deck, which adds plus two to basically any of your uh, basic ability scores. Now, imagine that you're playing this. You've got one point here, two points here. So that's three, four, five. Now for every essential action that he uses, now you're at a five. That's pretty crazy. So think of it this way. Without even using Always Be Running, you could hit for 10 points of damage, or you could thwart for, um, you know, 10 threats. Now, if you add Always Be Running into the mix, you're going to do that one additional time. So you could be hitting the villain for 15 points of damage or removing 15 threats from various schemes. That's pretty crazy. Quicksilver is super good late game, super poor and kind of hard to play at the beginning of the game but once you get these combos out and you start to master this idea it adds up really quick and you can have some really insane turns toward the end of the game people like seeing the new cards in the set so i always like to show this speed cyclone there's only one copy of this in the quicksilver cards hero action stun axe enemies it's pretty good it's pretty cost effective but i didn't find it really overwhelming or or very game changing i think very situationally it was super cool but it wasn't one of those cards that I was, you know, super amped to see every time I saw it. Uh, the next one is Double Time, and this is pretty cool. You can do a combination of two of these, and you can do the same one twice. Deal two damage to an enemy or remove two threat from a scheme. So do two and two, or do four points of damage, or remove four threats, uh, whatever you feel like doing. I think it's a, a pretty normal, basic card. I didn't think it was overpowered or anything exceptional. Alter Ego abilities and effects, we're just going to run through them. So his Alter Ego form, you can discard two cards from your hand to draw two cards, and if Wanda's out, you can draw three. So once the Scarlet Witch set drops and you're playing together, you could get an extra sort of synergy um, from that. And then also, too, there's this Serval Industries. It has to be done in Alter Ego mode. You exhaust this to shuffle two Quicksilver cards from your discard pile back into your draw deck. I kept doing this, so I kept cycling, always be running back in, 
And then I always love to put maximum velocity back in as well. So I thought this was pretty cool. So I recommend if you do want to shuffle something back in, shuffle probably maximum velocity first and then a copy of Always Be Running. I did kind of like one and one that seemed to work out pretty well. Probably one of the most bizarre but coolest resource cards I've seen in this game to date is this friction resistance card. There's only one copy of this in the Quicksilver deck. And it, it's kind of strange, but it's a lot of fun. So basically what happens is that you can exhaust this to gain a physical resource, which is very cool. Now you can use Quicksilver to do whatever it is you feel like doing, attacking, thwarting. And then when you ready Quicksilver, what's pretty cool is that it re-readies this resource and then you can use it again to purchase something else. So you can kind of like spend it use it and then it, it readies again and then what makes things even crazier it's not capped out on how many times it can ready so a lot of times in this game you can only do it once per phase but in this case you can do as many times as you want so here's our one of our favorite cards here always be running so anytime you're triggering this to ready quicksilver back up then it essentially gets this to ready back up as well. So you have like a lot of this stuff going on and everything's tapping and, and untapping, readying and exhausting. It's pretty cool. Just be aware to read this and, and understand it right out of the gate. It's super powerful. It's super weird, but it's also super fun. Kind of on a final note, it doesn't really have anything to do with Quicksilver, but Multiple Man comes in the Quicksilver set. And I had a lot of fun with this thing. It's super cool. It's a little bit pricey, obviously, to bring it out with four. But what it allows you to do is go into your deck and then pull another copy. And then when this one comes out, then you can go into your deck and allow the other one to come out. So essentially, you can get all three of them out at the same time with the cost of four. So you don't actually have to pay this cost. This response and triggered effect brings it out from your deck for free. And then this one then... If the third multiple man is in your deck, you can pull that one out as well. So it's super cool. It's super weird. Um, I thought it was just a lot of fun, especially when you're kind of at the top of your deck and they're all like mixed in there. It allows you to pull all three of them out. And, you know, you can also have them in your hand as well. So the chance of it going off and getting all three out for four points is, is pretty high. And this is really the only external ally that I have in the deck. Um, but I thought it was super fun and definitely, you know, fun to try out. You don't have to put multiple man in this deck. You can mix in whatever allies you feel like. I just thought it was fun. As a quick summary, I think the Quicksilver deck is fun to play. I felt that when I was mixing in the other aspects, I think the survivability was greatly diminished. I had a rough time with Justice decks and sometimes the Aggression deck was really rough too, surviving hits from the villain. Um, obviously with the leadership, it wasn't as big of a deal because I just had the allies block for me during it. But for me, protection seems to be the natural fit for Quicksilver. So I highly recommend if you do put a deck together, try protection first and then look for kind of this multiplier theme. Get Quicksilver's basic um, ability scores up and then just use them over and over again with the multiple copies of Always Be Running. And like I said, once you get this multiplier effect going, this guy can hit like a freight train. And the other thing that was really surprising, it was almost one of the best threat mitigation characters I've ever played. So from a multiplayer perspective, especially when you have a lot of threat coming in onto the main scheme every turn, you know, because you have that extra player multiplier, I really felt that sort of using Quicksilver's thwart ability in a multiplayer game was awesome. Um, consequently, I felt that in a solo player game, I was gravitating more toward the attack and you could do some pretty cool things with that. But bottom line, being able to defend multiple times per the enemy phase is super cool as well. So definitely check that out. So I wanna thank you all for joining me again today. Hopefully this kind of gave you a decent overview of Quicksilver and maybe spark some ideas and some thoughts you might have for your own deck building ideas. So once again, thanks for your time and as always have fun gaming.